and known for her uh, great contribution in the research field so i would like to welcome you ma'am to our online session so please do start the session as per your convenience thank you ma'am yeah. thank you eva for that wonderful introduction of mine i think uh, there are some few more participants who would be joining us i look forward that more and more number of participants should be there so should we wait or we'll start yeah ma'am uh, we can start the session because we don't know na actually government has declared that regarding the mm. exam so we are not sure whether they would be so we can start the session it's good it's going to be recorded so they can see it later as well so it would be a quite beneficial okay. yeah okay okay then fine good morning all all the participants those who are here i hope in my next uh, session there will be more number of participants because that gives us a boost to teach all right now today i will start with a very important portion which is a part of the history of english literature that is the restoration and the 18th century i hope that the 18th century was uh, the one that in the first semester you might have got some introduction about what 18th century is all about but before i give you a brief introduction of the 18th century a very important part of 18th century is the restoration without knowing about the restoration we cannot go do away uh with the restoration because we have to first know what the restoration is and then we will come across the 18th century that will help us to understand the 18th century better because it is a part of it now today's content the, there are few things that we will be talking about in details today that is i will give you a brief introduction on the topic then we will talk about the restoration period which is roughly from 1660 to 1700 then uh, within the restoration we have another important event that took place that was the glorious revolution during that we also talk about the neo classicism and then we come across enlightenment which is the age of reason or enlightenment which is known as the 18th century the 18th century is also known as an age of enlightenment so these are few terms that you will come across while i take uh, the classes ahead now this is a roughly i would give you a brief idea about the epochs the different periods epoch means it is defined as the periods of british literature so you all know that the beginning of the history of english literature started with old english literature which was the approximate date was from 450 to 1100 and during that period of time almost all the writers of the period were anonymous we don't know exactly the name of the authors or the writers after the old english literature we have the middle english literature which started from 1100 to 1500 it continued up to that and the main major writer there was only one major writer we can say it was geoffrey chaucer because this middle english literature was also known as an age of chaucer after that we have the renaissance that renasa we can be divided into two different phases one was early renasa and the second phase that was the later phase is the elizabethan age so renasa is broadly categorized into two early renasa and elizabethan age which continued from 1500 to 1603 there were some major writers one was sir thomas wilde uh, uh, he was a major writer during the renasa and the elizabethan age was predominantly dominated 
by William Shakespeare, as we all know. Then comes the 17th century, which was basically from 1603 to 1688. During this period, again, we have different phases in the 17th century. That was early 17th century, which continued from 1603 to 1640. Then we have the Civil War and Commonwealth, which is very important. And we all know that John Milton was the pioneer of this era. And then comes the Restoration, which we will be talking about today. That is from 1660 to 1688. Predominantly, the writers were Milton, Bunyan, Dryden, and the 18th century from 1688 to 1780. So today, I would be talking to you from 1660 to 1780, which was an age of Pope, Defoe, Swift, Stern, and basically Johnson. So these were some of the major writers of the period. Now, I have drawn, tried to draw a timeline up to 1660. Why 1660? Because basically, when we talk about the Restoration Age, it started from 1660. That is what we believe in. Now, prior, before coming to 1660, there were major events that took place. We have to understand that first. From 1642 to 1651, the English Civil War took place. That is one of the most important events of history of English literature, which you all must know. If you want to note down, please note down these timelines, as it is very, very important. After that, 1649 was another year where Charles first was beheaded. This is very important thing that you all should remember. He was beheaded on orders of the special parliamentary court. And that was the major change that happened in the history. From 1650 to 51, within these two years, Charles II, he flee to Scotland. And he attempted to invade England and then he escapes again back to France. This was the two years of Charles II. From 1653 to 1658, we have Oliver Cromwell. Please remember the name. The name is Oliver Cromwell. He was the one. So before Charles II, Charles II restored to the throne, these were the major events that took place from 1642 to 1660. 1660 was the year when Parliament restored stores Charles II to the throne. Now, before I go to the next slide, please remember a few important things I would like to say. One thing that I would like to introduce is that after years of tumult and upheaval, England settled happily after from 1660, we'll find that into a time of peace, order, and prosperity. Behind the package of tradition, however, was a radical new way of thinking that took place, especially when we will be talking about the enlightenment. That's what it happened. So enlightenment started taking from the restoration. And you will find that there was a new way of thinking in terms of scientific, logical. And when we talk about scientific and logical, then the people considered themselves to be enlightened. The monarchy had been restored again in 1660, and this era, reason ruled unchallenged. 
this is what exactly happened during that point of time now so please next slide now these are few important things that you should remember about the period of restoration what happened during charles the second reign that continued from 1660 to 1685 now during this period of time the church of england it regained its power this is very important you all should know that the church of england it again re regained its power okay the coronation of charles ii in 1616 and he regained the throne he was given the throne back and you will find that samuel pepys he had recorded this event in his diary where he is describing that when charles ii he regained the throne there was a lot of pomp and show all over england you will find people rejoicing with a lot of joy because after 11 years a king had again regained the power the kingship had again gained its power so there was he describes in his diary that around 10000 people who watched the king his scepter in his hand under a canopy borne up by six silver stars carried by barons of the critic courts and little bells at every end and quote this is what is quoted from samuel pepys diary and this grand celebration it signaled the beginning of a new era in england and what is this new era known as it is known as the restoration am i clear okay now after the church of england regained its power you will find that the life of the aristocratic courtier that particular thing the aristocracy reigned gained importance the aristocratic courtier became the model for a sophisticated age of taste and luxury you can call it that the particular age age was considered to be sophisticated sophisticated that means they were you know they turned their back on the grim era of puritan rule and england entered into a lively period why lively which was the glittering you know the stuart court you will find of charles ii what did he do he set the tone of the upper class of the society and political life he gave importance to the aristocracy the aristocratic class of society charles had spent as we all know in a long exile in france and upon his return he tried to emulate the sophistication and splendor that he had observed at the court of louis the 14th okay he was exiled and he had spent his life in the court of louis 14 and as a result the lords and ladies of his courts were dressed in silk and lace that was how the sophistication was brought into the society after that you will find that the theaters which were closed for a long period of time prior to the restoration again reopened and the censorship of the arts declined religious persecution of catholics and dissenters by anglicans became in white spread so the catholics and the dissenters they were harassed a lot during this time there was religious persecution of the catholics and the dissenters now who were the dissenters basically 
the dissenters were the separatists okay they were the separatists and basically the protestant christians who had separated from the church of england in the 17th and the 18th century that's why we call them as the dissenters now why do we call england during this era as enlightened england what is the reason why do we call that it was an age of enlightenment or an age of reason this is a very important point and most of the time you get the question on this that why do you consider 18th century as an age of enlightenment or as an age of reason this is a very important question as far as your exams are concerned so we have to understand that from the period from 1660 to 1800 in england is known as an age of enlightenment the age of reason the augustan age or the neo classical period it's the same thing whatever you call this age as now we call it as it as an age of enlightenment basically because people used reason and not faith please keep that in mind what did they do the people used reason not faith to make sense of the world please keep this in mind that they did not use faith rather they used reason they understood they started questioning people became more analytical they did not believe on the false idols of religion this is the important change that brought a, you know the development and growth in the people during the period during the era and the Uh, it was that people used scientific reasoning what did they use scientific reasoning to understand the world and earlier you know what the people regarded the people regarded natural events such as comets eclipses all these things they regarded as warnings from god they thought that these are the warnings from god and the new scientific way of understanding the world that suggested that we have to apply reason people could know the natural causes of such events so the scientific method people started using the scientific method and this period brought many changes not to one particular area but to all the areas like it brought changes to the society it brought changes to science to religion and also in the field of literature the details will be should i move to the next uh, slide yes sir next slide do i need to show the no, slide no, no. sir i mean to ask that this is just slide pardon sir should i move to the next slide or no that's what i want to ask now no yes sir next slide Uh, 
Ma'am, is this uh, PPT visible? No, it is not visible, sir. It's not visible. It is not visible to me. Okay. I think the other presenters also started presenting. Just a minute, ma'am. Now it's visible, ma'am. No. And now it's visible? Yeah. It's not visible, sir. Uh, learners, any of you can unmute your mic and let me know whether this PPT is visible or not. Please ask the learners because to me it is not visible. Yes, ma'am. Uh, learners? Shiva, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, Ashwata, uh, you need to click on Amit sir. Uh, uh, what that in the contact? Click on Amit sir contact number so that we can see the screen. Amit sir, party. Please click on Amit sir party. Then it will be visible. Amit sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, please uh, disconnect and again reconnect, ma'am, if there is any issue. Okay, I'll again disconnect because it's not coming. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, please do that. Uh, Ma'am, now is this uh, PPT visible? Ma'am? Shweta ma'am, Shweta ma'am, but it's visible to me sir. Yes, yes ma'am, yes ma'am. I mean that's why I asked her because I even I can I can also see the PPD. So I asked her to. Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah.
Hello, ma'am. Hi, yes. Now it is visible, Amit. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Fine, ma'am. Can you bring the slide that I was teaching? Yes, ma'am. Just a minute, ma'am. All right. So now I I think I was telling you about how or why what is the reason that we call England as enlightened England. The reason is that when we call something as enlightened, we know the logical reasoning. We have the capability to reason things. Okay, and that exactly what the people of England did during the enlightened enlightened period. they started they began to use scientific reasoning to understand the world they did not they did not uh, you know take religion as it is they wanted the reason or we can say people used reason not faith to make sense of the world and this period it brought many changes to different areas that is it brought changes to the society that i was talking to you about then a lot of changes happened in the field of science religion and literature so let us talk about society now the next slide please next slide please sir yes ma'am it's society ma'am society so uh, when we talk about the society i i think i was telling you that the rich lived lavishly you will find that charles the second gave a lot of importance to the aristocratic way of life so the rich they lived lavishly in the society the the theaters that had been closed for long years again reopened so the rich were the one the aristocratic class attended the newly reopened theaters you will find them wearing expensive and heavily ornamented clothing so uh, they also used makeup they wore heavy wigs you know that extended high over their heads the typical photographs you can find and not only women but also the men in my first slide i had shown you that how the men also they used to wear wigs and they were not very small wigs but they were heavy wigs and it was extended high so the spirit of enlightenment it led to many improvements in the living conditions you will find that the uh, you know the wealthy aristocrats they also built lavish country estates that were surrounded beautifully with lawns and gardens and the rich people they attended or hosted balls masquerades and dinners in london and in fashionable resort cities such as but this is the example where people the aristocratic class used to attend next slide sir but if the rich they spent a very lavish life but the poor people they suffered a lot because of the industrial revolution that took place the poor became poorer so the conditions for the poor of england it you know it deteriorated it the poor became poorer and you will find that these poor people they lived in filthy and overcrowded slums 
know the slums where people were clustered together not one but many 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 poor all of them had to live and that's why the slums were overcrowded you will also find that these poor class of society they suffered from poor sanitation and because of poor sanitation they had also acquired a lot of diseases they were often sent to debtors prisoners because they could not earn a good living so they had to take debt from people and when they were unable to repay the debt they were imprisoned so that's why the prison the prisoners were known as the debtors prison and they had access to cheap gin and there was high rates of alcoholism so we all know that when the poor people suffer they suffer from not one area but from many and that's how the poor lived a very traumatic life next now the main reason why the enlightenment took place was because of the enhancement of science and technology we all know that this era was known as an era of scientific advancement and who was responsible for the growth and development in science it was none other than sir isaac newton his book which was published okay in uh, what was the name of the book mathematical principles of natural philosophy this is a very important book which you all should know the name of name of the book is mathematical principles of natural philosophy which was published in the year 1687 this was the year when this book was published this book it laid out the newly formulated laws of gravity and motion what did it do newly formulated laws of gravity and motion and the methodology by which he arrived at this conclusions so newton's scientific method which gained a lot of popularity not only during that time but also today even still uh, it is employed today it consists of the analytical facts what does it consist of the analytical facts and it is created by developing a hypothesis and testing that hypothesis with experimentation these were few important things that sir isaac newton gave a message to the society through the scientific method and newton's findings they were enormously important why it was important because they suggested what they suggested that the universe is operated please mark my word what it suggested that the universe is operated by logical principles universe is operated by logical principles and humans were capable of understanding it humans were capable of what of understanding the principles this is the most important thing that newton taught us and you will find that inspired by newton's example the scientists 
and as well as the astronomers you will find that they learned that the stars were not fixed but the stars were moving and the milky way was an immense collection of stars these are few new things which were which inspired the scientists and the astronomers of the age so robert hooke contributed to the field of astronomy biology chemistry and physics these were some major big breakthrough in the field of science first was so isaac newton's discoveries and invention and then it was robert hooke who contributed not only in the field of astronomy but also in the field of biology chemistry and physics and after that we know a very famous person that is robert boyle who laid the foundation for the study of chemistry so these were some scientific development that took place during the age they were all the enlightened philosophies that the discoveries of newton brought into the lives of people not only the scientists but also the philosophers next slide sir now the next important area which really you know we have to look into is religion now we all know that prior to this age prior to the age of restoration people were the staunch believers of religion whatever religion brought to them people believed it they never questioned they had 100% faith in religion that is the one thing but it changed during this period there was a transformation in the faith of people there was a change that occurred during this phase so catholics and the dissenters members of non anglican protestant church they were persecuted they were really harassed because many dissenters had immigrated to other countries in search of what in search of religious freedom so we can say that during this point of time you know the church of england that really dominated and because it dominated the other groups they suffered a lot they they lost their identity like the catholics and the dissenters deists which means believers of new and controversial religious doctrine they were known as deists they were the new uh, be believers and what was this doctrine it viewed the universe as a perfect mechanism that god had built and then left to run on its own so god had created the universe but now the universe is to be taken care by its own god will not take care of what of the universe who believed in this the deists the deists were a new group a new controversial and religious doctrine they were the believers of this doctrine which viewed that the universe is a perfect mechanism in what way that god had built the universe and left the universe to run on to our own that is a most controversial thing that happened during this period so this is what happened about the religion so next slide please now the most important change that took place was in the field of literature and specifically drama because 
the theaters again reopened after a long long time so suddenly you will find that the popularity of theaters grew and that's the reason why drama was the most popular genre during this period drama became very very popular during the restoration and the 18th century during this period the female actors they were also allowed to join they could act the female actors were allowed on stage and prior to this the female actors were not allowed but now during this era there was a change the female actors were allowed to act on the stage the comedies of manners it reflected the life of the rich and the leisured classes i think all these comedies of manners and all you might have learned in the previous semester so i will not go into a lot of detail about these things then the heroic dramas they entertained their audiences with their melodramatic devices and what were those melodramatic devices the exaggerated dialogues the dialogues that they used were what it was not normal rather they were exaggerated exaggerated a lot of exaggeration was there while they talked and you will find that there were emotional outbursts and stereotypical characters the characters that you find were stereotypes see what do we mean by the stereotypical characters they are basically you know a uh, biased characters stereotype you stereotype a person when when you you know you discriminate between one particular thing like a male and a female you try to discriminate between people in, uh, in terms of gender biasness that is stereotypical characters they have a certain norm that if you are a male you will have to perform like this if you are a female you have to perform like this that is stereotype you cannot go beyond you don't have that freedom so you will find that the heroic dramas really entertained the audiences next slide sir okay apart from drama you will find that the uh, genre that gained importance was prose now scientists they developed a more precise style of writing and that what the elizabethan predecessors had written so what was the more precise style of writing they avoided metaphors and allusions which you will find a very predominant style in the elizabethan age the way they wrote had a lot of metaphors and allusions but during this period they avoided using a lot of ornate metaphors and allusions so instead of that what did they do they used shorter and more concise sentences the sentences which they wrote they were not long rather they were what they were very short precise and concise to the point sentences they didn't believe in lengthy sentences this is a major change that happened in the field of prose then as far as the essayists and journalists are concerned they developed a prose style and what was that prose style it pleased the middle class readers so we can say that the prose the prose style of writing was basically 
for the middle class readers rather than the aristocratic class and what does this convey this convey that the style of writing was very very simple simple style of writing so that the middle class readers could understand it they did not believe in writing those flowery language the flowery language could be understood only by the aristocratic but they believed that if they want that the readers there will be more number of readers then they should write for the common man and who were they the middle class middle class readers were given more importance by the essayists and the journalists now be, uh, before this i would like to give you an important discussion on what exactly in the field of when we are talking about essayists and journalists i will tell you that newspapers they had been around since the 1600s during that time but there was rigid censorship okay under both charles one the first and oliver cromwell and they had discouraged the growth of the newspapers during their era but when charles ii took uh, you know he was again crowned he gave a lot of importance to the writings so daily newspapers started appearing during this era and there were serials these were you know in the form of serials such as the tattler and the spectator these two names are very important the tattler and the spectator what did they do they published essays the tattler and the spectator they published essays essays written by who the two famous writers it was joseph edition J O S E P H Joseph Edition A D D I S O N Joseph Edition and Richard Steele R I C H A R D Richard Steele S T E E L E so the tatler and the spectator published essays by joseph edition and richard steele that satisfied the middle class appetite for what for instruction and amusement so journalists did not simply report current events they moralized not only moralized but mocked and gossiped giving their opinions on everything so the journalists had they played different roles not only one role and this particular thing was uh, in a way from social manners to international politics that's the great change the newspapers or we can say the essayists and the journalists brought in the field of prose next slide sir please now after drama prose we come to the next important a uh, genre that is poetry so in terms of poetry we basically call that it was a neo classical poetry which appealed to the intellect and reason more than to emotion this is the major characteristic of the poetry of this era which you will not find in the previous era 
it was what it basically appealed to the intellect and reason not to emotion more than emotion it gave emphasis to intellect and reason that became the main motive of the poetry okay the use of wit they used a lot of wit often witty and filled with classical allusions this is another characteristic that you find in poetry witty and classical allusions had a public use it was used for the public like to celebrate to mourn or to ridicule if you if you want to celebrate the poet the poets wrote poetry if they wanted to mourn at the death of someone they wrote poetry if they wanted to ridicule someone that means satire satire was another form which you find in the poem sarcastic way you ridicule the current happenings in the society they used poetry as a mean to open their heart out to talk about the poetry and next important thing it followed strict rules strict rules of form rhyme and meter there were some poet you know very popular poetic forms that you find during this age and what were they they were odes elegies and satires these were the three important poetic forms that you find during the next slide sir now i was talking to you about satire please remember that whenever you write about the 18th century you have to talk about satire because satire was the main form of writing during the 18th century the writers excelled in satire okay what is a satire it is a kind of writing that ridicules human weaknesses vice or folly in order to bring about social reform when we want to bring some social changes what is reform changes suppose you know that your society is full of corruption now i cannot straight away go and tell you know that these bodies are corrupted but through my writing i can definitely ridicule them through my writing i can tell them that this is what is wrong this is the change that i need to bring into the society that is where i use satire as a device satire is a literary device that i can use okay in order to bring certain social reforms because our society is full of goods and bads so when i want to ridicule about the bads i can use the satire i can use the satiric way to talk about that is the role of satire so exactly the writers did this they used the 18th century writers used satire to talk about the demerits of the society especially 
the human weaknesses, the follies, the vices that were there. And Alexander Pope, when we talk about satire, we can never forget the great famous writer of the age because this age is also known as the age of Pope. Alexander Pope generally satirized the immorality and the bad taste of the leader classes, leisured classes in works. And the best example is the rape of the lock. The rape of the lock is the best example which is used, which can be used to talk about Alexander Pope using the satirized manner to talk about the immorality. Another writer who used satire was Jonathan Swift. So what did he satirize? He satirized the hypocrisy and smugness of human behavior. You know, people were becoming hypocrites. And that's the reason for the downfall of a society. So Jonathan Swift satirized the hypocrisy. The best known work was Believer's Travel. These two important works are really very, very important. Please keep that in mind. Next slide, sir. Now, see, whatever today I am teaching you, this is not in a full fledged way, right? I am just because this is an introduction class. So I wanted you all to know about uh, different things in a nutshell. So this is an introduction class. In brief, I will give you a lot more details. So don't think that this is my first and last class on 18th century and the restoration. I hope you all understand it. Now, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Now, see, when we talk about the novels, they were the form that came into being in the 18th century and it became immensely popular. So we know that there were two important things that I would like to tell about the 18th century novels. That is, it described the middle class life. Now, why the novels became popular? It is obvious. When the real life of the people is being described in the novel, the readers would definitely like to read it. Why? Because they would think whenever you are reading a novel, you pick up an 18th century novel and you are reading and suddenly you come across a character and you feel, oh, this character is so similar. So when you feel that similarity, when you feel that familiarity with the character, you want to read more and more and more and more. And that's exactly what happened during the 18th century. People could relate themselves with the characters of the novels. And uh, uh, that's how they started reading more and more novels. And the novels became popular. So it described the middle class life. And they were often earthy and comical, lighthearted. So that will set your you know, your mood in the right tone. You would really be very jovial when you read that novel. And the next important thing that the 18th century novel explored was the emotional lives of characters in detail. So when the emotional lives of characters are described in the novel, you also get emotionally attached to the character. That's the benefit of it. And the next point is, you will find that there were epistolary novels in which 
the story is told in a series of letter the stories are not in the form of uh, you know basically uh, you will find the typical scenes or chapters but in the form of letters the way the moment you start reading letters the story also proceeds the best example is richardson's pamela that is one of the best example of the 18th century novel which is written in the epistolary next slide sir okay now i have given you an overall idea about the restoration about the 18th century uh as an introduction class i hope you have understood whatever i told you so there are few important some not many questions that i would like to ask you okay now the first question is after oliver cromwell died who was the one who restored to the throne in 1660 option a is elizabeth option b is henry 8 option c is charles the second what is the answer anybody can answer participants please unmute your mic and one by one you can answer the question so that it would be quite please interactive question. question who restored the throne in 1660 may I answer ma'am as a participant charles the <laughs> second <laughs> charles the second yes very good it was charles second who restored the throne after oliver cromwell died the next question is members of non anglican protestant churches they were persecuted Yes, uh, ma'am. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, there is a power cut, so I won't be able to present the PPT, ma'am. You will go. Excuse me, I didn't got you. No, no. There is a power cut right now, so I won't be able to present the PPT. Oh ho! Oh, okay. I'm unable to present the PPT, ma'am. All right, all right. Ma'am, you can just call out the question so that we can hear. Is yes, I can. Yes, I will. I will call out the question. so the next question is uh, the second question that i want to ask you is members of non anglican protestant churches were persecuted during restoration is it true or false yeah chandrashekar you are on able to hear my question yes. members of non anglican protestant churches yes it is, it is true ma'am it is true or false somebody Ch said true yeah chandrashekar is saying true true yeah true ma'am absolutely correct thank yeah. you the next question the dash was a new literary form developed during the 18th century and it explored the emotional lives of characters in detail i repeat the question the dash was a new literary form developed during the 18th century 
it explored the emotional lives of characters in detail the options are letter novel or sonnet what is the answer ma'am i think it's novel novel very good it is the right answer is novel because novel was the one what did it do it talked about the emotional life of people yes ma'am now over to you all the participants if you do have any doubts in whatever portions i taught you today kindly ask it's your time excuse me ma'am yes uh how do how do you mean a stereotypical character pardon pardon sir a stereo typical character yes yes i i had used a term that is stereotype basically what is stereotype stereotype is when somebody considers themselves to be dominant than the others that means you consider yourself to be superior and the other to be inferior that is stereotypical you will find you. that basically in society in a patriarchal society um, the men they consider themselves superior than the women so this is a okay. stereotype thing that is there in our society a kind of we can say dominance of one one gender over other or one caste over other you know like in hindus we think that the brahmins are the superior most caste than any other car so that is Understood. typical stereotype things that exists in our society that is stereotype thank you yeah any any other question please ask i welcome questions from the students that shows that you are listening and there is a question in the chat box yes Yes, I will be reading it all. Okay, uh, chat box. What were the famous novel written during the Restoration period? See, there were. See, I told you that there were many novels, but because I have not given the even the novelist's name today. Okay, it was uh, basically an overall idea as to what it is. Ah. so in my later classes i will be talking to you about the great novelists of the restoration age and along with them i will also tell you about the famous novels this this is not you know i have not taught you these things in details today okay anything else because we i have not taught you about uh, john bryden uh oh, william congreve they were all famous novelists during this period so i will tell you about even their writings in details in my coming classes any other question participants if you are having any question then please to unmute your mic and directly interact with the resource person else we are good to go by winding up the session right
okay ma'am i think uh, we can wind up the session as they are not uh, having any questions okay. or regarding they haven't yet uh, written anything in the chat box so All yeah right. ma'am thank you thank you for such a wonderful session and it was quite uh, insightful and we learned a lot and the presentation was quite very interactive and this and we are we are looking forward for more such sessions so please do uh, take you. more such sessions like that and it will be quite fruitful for our participants as well so thanks a lot to one and all to the technical team to our participants and nevertheless it's because of you resource person that we are able to get the knowledge yeah thanks a lot ma'am thanks a lot thank you thank you so much thank you for your participation and your patient listening i hope in my coming sessions i get to see more participants coming in thank you so much yes ma'am and i would request you to participants to kindly uh, fill up the uh, form that is being made available so that we can uh, know your feedback okay participant please do fill up the feedback form that we can make uh, certain improvements if required hopefully i am uh, audible to the participants so please do uh, fill up the feedback form right okay okay thank you to one and all thanks a lot thank you so much